Wow. Wow. That looks cool. It's a 17 R. Hey everybody, Josh Yarvey, Nerd of Bishop's RV, down here kicking it with Coachman today. And you know, I've been doing this about 15 years now. I'm a professional looker at her of campers who's seen tens of thousands. So I get kind of dumb to these things. And every now and then I walk by one, I go, whoa, like, what is that? What are you doing over here? They did some major work on this Apex Remote series over here, previously called Apex Terra, then Apex Remote last year. It just didn't, it almost just didn't feel like it was done, son. And they have definitely tightened the screws since then. Completely different look from the rest of the Apex line. What this thing is designed to be is not like the, the most hardcore off-road adventure camper, brother. It's not that at all. And the budget reflects that. But it hits a lot of really major notes coming in thousands, potentially tens of thousands less compared to a lot of other similar campers for someone who maybe wants to do a little bit of camping off pavement here and there, but also still wants some comforts, maybe, you know, in a park or, you know, if you're mooch docking off the aunt and the uncle sometime or something like that. And the basic look of the outside of this thing, I think that, like, I could see that look spreading through the rest of their lineup. That's my opinion. What do you think? I am, I am in love with all these, like, oval-style windows. They just look very, very cool to me. And the majority of them do still open for airflow, which is very cool. And that, especially the windshield on this one, really struck me. Now, I'm sorry, I'm off track here. We are a double Asdell product, Asdell inside and outside. It's got a little bit of a, a higher lift package to it, which is also nice. By default here, this also has 200 watts of solar, but you can option in their super solar package which will bump you up to 600 watts and a 2000 watt inverter with a bigger charge controller to help handle that again not something we're going to run the air conditioner off grid it's nothing like that it's the kind of rv where if you do want to spend some time running lights running fans like the big xl fan in the living room and you don't want to worry about your battery dying all the time this might be an interesting little new option that sweeps the leg of a lot of other people out there now, I, I think the big like exterior eye appeal is like one of the major eye catchers on this one, but it's not without good content on the inside too. Uh, I'm actually like, if you just woke up in bed and you're standing over on the driver's poop side of the camper, this is what you might be looking at here. And one of the little benefits on this RV that's not as obvious from just glancing at it on the outside, maybe decently obvious with all the windows on the door side, is how much window coverage you get here. But the way they trimmed out, framed out, and utilized that front oval uh, kind of shaped windshield, I really, I really like that. It just gives this thing, I think it, it's a statement right away. Not to mention, the windows don't stop there. I mean, I think the windows over on the kitchen side are actually even bigger, which is crazy. But if, uh, you know, you want awesome cross breeze, if you're camping in the middle of nowhere and you want awesome visibility or something like that, you want to see, is it a coyote or is it a gas station murder hobo? Come and get me outside. Well, you can do that here very, very nicely. Now, I do want to mention, I try to point this out where I can. That's not a true queen bed. I'm only eyeballing it. I don't have a tape measure. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that's something more in the spectrum of a full size like a 54 by 74, but I've heard from a lot of people who are solo campers, like that's perfect. They'd rather have a little bit smaller bed to maintain those hanging wardrobe towers on both sides of the bed um, and storage below. So, you know, it's working on a lot of different levels here. Now they were smart with the lighting. They didn't go over the top, but they didn't go minimal. And you can always click those off individually. And in these series, uh, in your in the biggest room of the RV, your living room, kitchen, shared area here, you'll get one of those big XL vent fans. You will still have the four inch fart fan back in the bathroom, but it's you know a small fan for a small room versus a big fan for a big room. And I think that kind of makes sense. Now the RV is six and a half foot tall on the sidewall. They didn't go super short, super light, uh, or like stupidly uh, short light, anything like that. But they do still have a little bit of a mini vaulted ceiling right here, which is one of those things that allows me to walk under the, uh, the air conditioner where I'm standing right now without my heads hitting the knobs like you saw on our flyby footage. And flip it around, kind of back to where we began over here. The one that we're looking at today is outfitted with their optional solar, a super solar, solar slooper. I'm an idiot. We're in the world's Carmen San Diego. I don't know. I was never good at geography as a kid. Um, I'm not good at geography now. I'm an American. <laughs> But that's where your charge controller, monitor, system panel thing will be. I think that's a really good location for it. I, I generally dislike it when manufacturers will bury that stuff like in a uh, 
pass-through compartment. I, I'd rather have it inside where I could see it. And, um, you know, it looks like the display is not on all the time, so it shouldn't really disrupt people sleeping. Now, you've got two disconnects on this. They actually did this very smart. Your battery disconnect for, like, lights and fans and all that stuff is located in there. When we open everything up for storage in a minute, in this left-hand upper cabinet is actually where you're going to see a solar disconnect. And what you're seeing here is like a residential style Bluetooth speaker, as opposed to, um, what do I want to say? Like a, a stereo head unit and speakers wired into the RV. I actually really kind of like the direction they're going there. Um, the last couple of years I've been kind of jaded on that based off of, uh, well, a few reasons, but, but basically it kind of looks like the RV industry may be shifting away from hardwired outside speakers. Not totally, not like, oh my gosh, the entire industry is doing it, but there's going to be a few brands that are doing little things like that here and there. And I'm personally kind of glad to see it. Now, good news, bad news, like the Animaniac. Well, by the way, what's your favorite good news, bad news Animaniacs? There's there's a lot of them. I, I, I'm not even sure which one I like the best. But anyway, leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, the window shade. You see how they still give you that little cord anchor over in the right next to the TPMS, which is another new for 24 feature. Tire pressure monitoring now standard on these. Glad to see that. Um, you know, the, the bad news here, though, that is tiny sink. I... I, I my two cents, this is just my nerdy opinion, a rectangle sink and a north-south two-burner stove, that would be the way I'd like to go with this, but what would you prefer in the kitchen? Kind of curious. I don't know. Over here, they are using, this is very similar, to, I think it's actually the exact same fridge as the Geo Pro. It's like a 5.3 or 5.7 cubic foot, something like that, 12-volt compressor fridge. And being a little bit smaller, uh, it's not going to eat juice nearly as fast and hard. Now, uh, again, good news, bad news. Good news, it's cool they have storage up here. Bad news, you can see how it does kind of require uh, you to hold it open because otherwise gravity going to drop it on you. Um, the uh, the storage around the bed is pretty straightforward. You have your you know side-to-side -side hanging wardrobes. You have storage under the bed. It doesn't have any sort of strut under the bed, but a small mattress like this is not as hard to lift up and kind of wedge the way that I did right there. A little camping pro tip and hack for you. Now, something over here. Um, you might ask, well, is there storage under the dinette? It depends. If you get one without the solar package, the left-hand bench closest to the camera frame right now, yes, there is storage down there. But with super solar, there is not because that's where they had to put their inverter, all that extra uh, stuff and all the extra wiring has to go under that bench right there because they really didn't have a whole lot of other option for it in any other area. And actually, if you're laying down in bed and you look up, this is kind of what you're seeing right here, which is really nice. You know, you can have a nice kind of eye-to-eye, uh, heart-to-heart -heart contact moment. Uh, doing a little bathroom staring test with somebody in the middle of the night, you know, if they don't shut the door. Uh, once again, reminds me of my Uncle Gary. You know, he can only use the bathroom when the door is all the way open, which creates some very awkward moments at the public Walmart. He's not allowed back there for another three months, but, you know, his, his, his Walmart sentence is ending soon. Space around the toilet was really nice in terms of hip and shoulder room. If you're long-legged like me, it's a little short, but it wasn't bad. I'm not really going to knock it too hard for that. And, you know, manufacturers don't have to do much, but just something on a otherwise big blank wall, just a place to hang a, a towel or something is nice. And I call that an octopus fight club, but until you can see the screws for eyes... Doesn't it kind of look like a little smiley animated dog mouth? Like two dogs kind of sniffing at us right there? I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing my little fur ball, my own little guy. I'm not sure. Now, the RV, again, is not super duper tall sidewall. So my head was all the way up in that skylight. I'm a little over six foot, by the way. But fact is, I can do it. it it's fine. And if it gets me into smaller, tighter spaces, if it allows me to park... Uh, a smaller RV in areas I otherwise couldn't. I could deal with that for a few minutes, you know, considering I only spend a couple minutes over there in the shower and I spend hours in the rest of the RV and it just kind of makes sense to me. You may have noticed all sealed edge thermal foil counters. Coachman's actually the brand that really originated that in the RV industry because Coachman owned the company that made those and with uh, Forest River acquiring Coachman uh, years ago, what it allowed them to do is Forest River now sells those countertops to other manufacturers. That's kind of a funny thing. So Forest uh, River literally sells their countertops to like Thor and everybody else. And I'm sure at an inflated price.
And I realized as I said that it sounded a little bit cutting and like uh, critical. That's not what I meant at all. Imagine you owned a company and somebody who you do direct business with wanted to buy parts from you. <laughs> I bet you'd raise the price tag for them a little bit too. And when it comes to towing, not everyone has a Ford freaking Ranger. Now there's the Ford Ranger, which is a very popular mid-size pickup. Then there's the Ford freaking Ranger, which was engineered and designed with unlimited payload and towing capacity. Uh, or at least you would think based on how some people tend to use them. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the thing I'm getting at here is you don't necessarily need a big giant monster truck to haul one of these around. I think that it could be a really good fit for uh, a decent tow package SUV or uh, again, a mid-sized pickup uh, would probably handle this very well. Now, uh, they have stuck with the seven foot wide platform on this because again, they are trying to make sure it is a little smaller, lighter, a little more compact, a little bit easier to pull around. So like if you're going in those state and national parks where sometimes weaving through the, uh, the roadways can get a little dicey, well, it won't be quite so much of an issue here. And maybe it's just because the blue lightsaber lighting has been done to freaking death in the business. That green is kind of working for me in green. It feels... You know, nature. I don't know. There's a connection there. My dad would say he likes green because it reminds him of money, but my father was Mr. Krabs um, <laughs> from <laughs> selling Krabby Patties. Never mind. Um, overall, I, I really love the look of this thing. What do you think of it? Now, um, your walls on this are double Asdell. So your Asdell inside and outside layering on the walls, it, like your interior wall board, the layer directly uh, below the fiberglass. One thing you're not seeing overtly really um, is a spare tire. And, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. That's on the back. For some reason, I was thinking it was belly mounted on this. I see a lot of campers. It all blends together. Derp, pardon me. Spare tires mounted on the bumper. You will see it overtly in a minute. We just haven't got there. Now, Pete the dog over here overlooking the Coachman logo. Also, we have magnet holdbacks uh, for our uh, baggage doors. And we have motion activated light. It might flare up in a second here. There we go. And like if you walk out, if like if that was left open and you walk out of your entry door and you slide out here, it's going to, you know, flare right up for you, which is nice. Now, um, just in front of that front stabilizer jack, which first of all, I'm going to give them credit. They put four corner stabilizers on a single axle camper. A lot of brands uh, won't do that to kind of, you know, save five cents. You can see that little yellow thing. That is a toy lock. Um, basically, like if you have some bicycles or something outside, you can help just kind of keep them tied to the RV. Or, you know, if Uncle Gary ties one on, you can tie him onto the RV to make sure he doesn't wander into traffic again. God, that guy is a problem. Anyway. I think we all know an Uncle Gary. He may not be Uncle Gary specifically to you, but we all know an Uncle Gary, I do believe. Now that little griddle is removable. There is of course a gas grill cooker hooker right down below it there. And you're not seeing it yet uh, because this is everything, uh, you know, that I'm showing you like this time of year, open house time of year. Maybe you might not even, I don't know, maybe watch this in February, it doesn't matter. Um, this is a prototype that we're looking at. It does not yet have the mount to add one of those telescopic removable ladders, but it will. These, uh, all your Apex family of campers will be uh, prepped and ready for that telescopic uh, removable mount. And when this video began, I mentioned how they can do some fun things with solar. Let's dive into that a little bit. So by default, I think it was last year, the whole Apex family standardized 200 watts of solar, which especially with a 12 volt fridge feels like a good kind of minimal starting point to me. Like I can respect that. It's not monster solar, but not everybody needs monster solar, but everyone will find some level of benefit to some level of solar. So I respect it. Um, this is no exception. It has a uh, you know 200 watt panel on the roof, but this Apex Remote Series is the only member of the Apex family capable of being upgraded with super solar, which is interesting that that's a phrase that a lot of manufacturers have all simultaneously adopted, but I think it's simple and it makes sense. You're gonna bump up from uh, a single 200 watt panel to three of those, so 600 total watts of solar and a 2000 watt inverter uh, along with a uh, 40 amp charge controller be able to handle all those panels. Now what that means, you're not going to be able to like, uh, you know, run the air conditioner and big stuff like that. The goal with this, uh, that system is to be able to provide you um, use of, uh, extended use of like power outlets when you are untethered, uh, as well as pretty, pretty fair use of all your 12 volt systems, lights, fans, all that, 
Uh, and where I really think those max solar packages on campers like this are super handy is for mooch docking. Like if you wanna go travel across the country, like you have kids that live in different spots of the country and you wanna go visit your kids or your grandkids or something like that and you wanna park in their driveway, this is a camper you can plug into like a normal household outlet with a 30 amp to, uh, household plug reducer. And with the extra juice you're getting out the solar package, pretty much be able to keep everything up and running however you want. So it is an RV that still provides some awesome flexibility. And if you do wanna get off the uh, beaten path and pavement a little bit, it allows you to do that too. So let me know what you think. Um, I, I'm really interested to see if this won't end up shaping a little bit of what happens through the rest of the Apex lineup. I'm kind of curious. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I will tell you, when I see something different, because I see the same thing all day, every day, whenever I see something different, I tend to give it like arbitrary bonus points, but that, that's just my two cents. I'd be curious to know what you think. Now, I'll leave you links in the video description. If we have any of these in stock, they'll be listed right on our website, or you can scan uh, off that QR code on your phone if you're just watching on TV, just for reference there. And let me know what you think of her. And if you like how we get down here and get you all the new things as soon as we can, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video. Even if you don't leave a comment, just clicking that like button, it does help spread the message. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Um.